Hello and welcome back to my channel. This tutorial has been designed for beginners of Video Studio Pro X6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through all the basics of editing and sharing on Video Studio and basically optimize the whole thing to be easy to understand, easy to use when you're putting it into practice and just really to let you get the idea of how to use the software. So I'm going to start off with how to insert the video into your library and then into your timeline. I'm then going to go and create titles and then format the titles, add animations and put that into the timeline onto your projects as well. I'm then going to put transitions between the video so you can understand how to do that, the basics of transitions. And also I'll show you a bit of um, the color correction which includes the white balance of your videos. Um, I'm also going to do some video filters such as the anti-shake or the color optimization uh, and then I'm going to finish off the project with an ending title and then I'll finally show you how to share it online onto a site such as YouTube. Okay, so I'm going to start off here and first of all we're going to be inserting the video into the library here. So to do that you need to click on this import media files button and then you need to locate the place on your computer where your files are. Mine are just in my editing folder here, so I've got three clips and I'm going to insert all of them. To do that, just left click and select all three, then click open. You'll then see that all three have then been added into my library here, but I want to get these into the timeline. So to do that, they're all, all three are selected now, but if you just wanted one, then you would just click on one, left click on it, drag it into the timeline and let go of left click. It's then inserted into the timeline. So if you wanted to insert all three or the other two, then you'd hold down control and then you can left click on both of them and then just do the same thing, left click and then drag it down into the timeline and both of them have then been inserted into the project. So we now need to create a title for this video these files will also need to be edited um, but for a start I'm just going to put title in there so I can see what length the video is going to be so to add the title I'm going to go to the beginning of the video and then I'm going to click the title button now there's some preset ones here and you can use these if you wish or you can make your own I'm going to make my own just so you can see how to do that and to do that first of all just click double click here and add a title so double click on there and then you can type in the name of your project or the name of your video or whatever you want to type in. So mine is going to be called Countryside View in 60 seconds. So I've typed that in and I've now inserted that into my project. So now what I want to do is I want to format that. Now it's defaulted to the last text and last colour that I used but I don't want that, I'm going to change that for this video and to do that you'll see on the right hand side here there is a whole list of different things for example the text, the size, the colour, the spacing between each letter and line you can change the border, you can add a shadow or a transparency you can have a text backdrop and um, there's so many things that you can do obviously you get your normal bolds and underlines and all that um, so it's basically like a word processor but with a bit more um, and you can do it on top of your videos obviously so what I'm going to do is first of all change the colour and the text so to change the text there's all these here you can choose whatever you want I'm just going to take a simple one so it's simple to read and you can see I've now applied that there which by doing that on there and I'm going to change the colour so I want my colour to be um, a light blue color you can see it stands out against the background and I'm also going to change the border and shadow now the currently is not a border but there is a shadow you can see here and the intensity of that is 5 now the higher the number for the intensity the wider the border will be or the shadow will be um, if you make this smaller then you'll see that it's a lot smaller and it's not as visible so I'm happy with about 2 for that so I'm going to select that but you can do other ones, there's other types like a drop shadow or an extrude shadow and you can also change transparency or the sharpness or the glow of that 
um, there's a few things that you can play around with here and you can also add a border if you wish um, but you probably wouldn't do that if you were going to add a shadow because they would sort of cancel each other out and you wouldn't really see the difference between the two um, but I'm happy with that so I'm just going to click OK and now I want to align this and I want it to be aligned to the center so you just click on wherever you want it to go you can put it to the bottom left or the top left or the the right hand side center but I'm just going to choose align to center for mine and you can see it's now aligned to the center okay so next I'm going to add an animation to this I'm going to add a fade in animation for this so click apply and then go to fade and then you'll see there's one here you can choose anything from this list you can choose anything else from here as well I'm just going to go with this basic one though and then if you want this to be just a fade in or just a fade out or a cross fade then you can change that just here where customize animation attributes is and you can choose how long you want it to pause for that's how long it will stay up for or you can choose the fade style which is fade in fade out cross fade um, the cross fade is where it come, it fades in and it fades out um, so you can choose whatever you want for this you can also change what you actually want it to be that fades um, if you want it to be just a character or just a word or the whole line or everything um, so for this I'm just going to choose the cross fade and then click OK and then when I play the project from the beginning you'll see that it will fade in and then it will fade out so you can change the length of that if you wish all you have to do is left click on it on the text and then using this arrow here just drag it to the right and then let go and then you've extended how long it is if you look at the top of the timeline you can see how long in duration that is so it's about four seconds that right so say you didn't want it to have the video behind the text you can add a color by doing this you can click here and you can choose any colors here or more to choose a different color just select one of these then click options click color picker and then choose any of these or you can select either of these two options and then define custom colors and you can choose any color you wish here and it will select that color for you so if I go for a dark green and then click add to custom colors and then OK you'll see the dark green has then been added and then you can apply this to the video and that will go in front of it and then if you extend that to the length of the text then it will be behind the text when it comes up so if you then press play you'll see that it will come up behind the text okay so that's the basics of the text at the beginning of your video so you can then go ahead and edit these videos all you have to do is go through it and say you got to a point which you didn't want then before the point you didn't want just click on these scissors here which is cut and then when you get to the point where you don't want it anymore so say you didn't want this middle section then cut it again and then just left click on that and press delete that will remove that piece of the video so I'll just remove this bit now so it makes sense and we're going to now include a transition into the video so to do this what you have to do is click on AB and then it may default to my favorites or it could be something else but if you select all you can choose other things to narrow the search down a bit but if you see all then you can see everything here and you can choose anything from this library um, to suit your video so for example if it's in the middle of a video going between two videos you probably wouldn't want to power off like this one is here because that would make it go to black and then it would come back on again um, so you'd probably want something like a smear or a mesh or something like that, a fade in fade out and that will basically put the transition between the videos so if for example I chose the progressive one which is just here you left click on that and then drag it in between the two video clips let go of left click and then you can then preview that by going in here and pressing play and you can see it went out in a progressive way with four sections um, and there are so many more you can choose from here it's very simple you just drag each one in to where you want it if you decide then to move this video clip where you've put the transition or you decide to delete it then it will delete the transition with it so I'm just going to choose another one now for in between the other video clip I'm going to go for the mosaic one and drag that in there and then we can preview that 
you can see that's another transition added there. So next we're going to be doing colour correction and white balance. So the white balance on these videos isn't actually that bad but if you had one which was clearly not white balanced then what you'd do is you'd left click on the video clip click options color correction and then you can tick white balance here now it will default to auto white balance and normally this works very well and you wouldn't have to pick your own color but on a few occasions you may have to and to do that you click pick color and then you click on the white on your video and it will then set the white balance as you just saw there so there are a few other things you can do here, for example the brightness or the contrast and a few other things. Um, you can play around with this, it's a very good idea to play around. And if you're not happy with what you've set on here, then simply just tick this and it will reset everything to how it was by default. Okay, so now we're going to move on to video filters. Um, and video filters are on this FX button here. And you can use title effects and you can also choose video effects. I'm just going to click all and you'll see all the effects there are and there's plenty of them to choose from. You can have anything from kaleidoscopes to lens flares or fisheye or FX swirl. Um, there's plenty of them. You won't go short of them. It's brilliant. Um, but I'm just going to add one, for example, the anti-shake. Now if you've been filming with a camcorder um, or anything in fact which you haven't quite held still and it shakes a bit and you just want to remove that then you can apply the anti-shake function and that should minimalize some of the shake so to apply that to your videos just left click on it same as everything else then drag it on top of your video and it will have then applied the filter so you may not be able to see much difference because these weren't that shaky in the first place but it has smoothed it off and if you actually then decided to remove that video filter that's very simple as well all you have to do is left click on the video click options then click on the filter you don't want anymore and then click this cross which is delete and it will have then remove the filter from your video clip okay so now we're going to apply an ending title to the video clip now that it's done you may have noticed that I actually called this video clip countryside view in 60 seconds and it's already about 55 seconds so when I've put around 5 second video clip on the end of the title it will pretty much bring it to around 60 seconds so it's the same as when we're doing it in the first place at the beginning um, what you do is you can either put the title over the video while it's still playing or you can add a background and instead of putting the color over this time I'm going to apply the background and I'm going to go right to the end of the video clip by zooming in here go to the very last slide of it and then I'm going to click edit take a snapshot it will then be applied into my library I'm going to drag that down and put it into the video track and then you'll see it's there I'm then going to apply my title so I'm just going to type that in and put the end and like I did before I'm going to align it to the middle and then I'm going to resize that to the length of the video track and when we play this you'll see that it will pause the video because I've put the snapshot in there and then it will come to an end so if I play this you'll see the video stops the end fades in and then the end fades out so when you're happy with your video and you've edited, edited it as much as you want then you can then go ahead and either share it to a online site such as YouTube or you can save it to your computer or you can just save the video file on your project and come back to it at a later date but for this video I'm going to be showing you how to share it to YouTube so to do this make sure you're happy with your video you need to click share then click upload to web YouTube and then depending on whether you've done it in 16 by 9 which is widescreen or 4 by 3 which is the more square video then you need to select the right one here so I've done mine in 16 by 9 so I'm just going to tick that and then you just need to find a place on your computer where you can save it to and then you can type in the name for it I'm just going to call it exactly what I called it before and then just click save it will then render the video I've done it in HD so the HD will obviously take longer to render um, 
but once it's done it will then come up with a window to make you sign up for YouTube or to log into your YouTube account and then when you've typed in your details you'll then be able to go ahead and type in the title of the video, the description, if you've got any tags for it, whether you want it to be public or private um, and a few other things which you can sort out when you're doing that and then it will let you upload it and then when it's uploaded it will be live onto YouTube so when this is finished rendering I'll just show you how to do that quickly okay so like I said before this is where you log into YouTube I'm just going to type in my details here um, but if you haven't got a YouTube account ready then you can click join YouTube at the bottom here so I'm just going to put my details in and then you will come onto this next page and you just need to make sure that you agree with everything here and once you've agreed you can then move on to the next step and then this is where you type in your title, description, tags, video category and whether you want it to be private or public so I'm just going to type in the name of my video and the description and any tags you've got and then you can then go ahead and choose a video category mine's just going to be entertainment and then whether you want it to be public or private, mine will be public then you can click upload now this will depend obviously on your internet speed it will also depend on how long your video is and whether you've rendered it in HD or not HD videos will take longer but once this video is uploaded then it will be live onto YouTube and there shouldn't be anything else to do so hopefully this tutorial has helped you especially if you're new to the software um, if you've got any further questions or any suggestions for videos in the future then please do feel free to comment below I always do try and read all the comments so I'm sorry if you have commented and I haven't replied I always try to so just leave another comment and I'll make sure I get back to you this time Thanks for watching everyone and look out for more videos in the near future.